Hi everyone, I'm George Matsumoto from Ambari. We've been working with our colleagues at the Monterey Bay Aquarium to help them bring the deep sea to land in a new exhibition. Into the deep, exploring our undiscovered ocean. And when it opens, you'll encounter some of the most incredible and rarely seen animals ever featured in an aquarium exhibition. So here they are. These are the aquarium's top 10 favorite deep sea animals. The mob stinger is a beautiful, small, voracious predator of a jelly. It is pink and purple and gold and it's gorgeous, but it also is deadly. It can sting any type of prey item, not only on its tentacles, but also it can sting on its bell. I've personally only seen this in a few jellies. I find it very unique and interesting. The mob stinger is one of the first animals you'll encounter when you enter into the deep. They're just a really interesting animal with a variety of behaviors that will be on display. When I look at basket stars, I'm just kind of amazed because they have so many arms and so many little appendages coming off. It looks very Tim Burton-esque. It's sort of like Nightmare Before Christmas. They uncurl their arms in a very slow, dramatic way. They can put their arms up and down in the water column to try to catch krill or any type of little meaty snacks that they can find in the deep sea. Just makes me think, how do they not get tangled with themselves? Because there's just so much going on. <laughs> Salmon snailfish is sort of this tadpole looking creature. They have these huge eyes and like a couple like little like trailing bits under their chin. Instead of using their very large eyes to look for food, they actually are using their fins. It kind of looks like a beard on their chin and they can use that to help locate their food. They're able to use these pectoral fins, which are kind of like little hands, to like touch the floor and find the food. And then once they taste something, then they will bend down and eat it. That's something you definitely don't see very often in this animal world. Predatory tunicates are an extremely unusual animal. They look like just a giant mouth stuck right to the seafloor. They wait for something to swim in and then they close the mouth and wait for the food to be digested. More like you might think of like a Venus flytrap. I think they look kind of like one of the piranha flowers from Mario, like the, the flower that just like kind of does that. Everything in the deep sea is used by animals trying to survive in one of the harshest environments on the planet. There's even worms that have developed to eat the bones of the whales that have been sitting on the bottom. There aren't very many animals out there that have the ability to break down bone and then use that as a food source. Bone worms look like a little thread just sticking out of the bone, but they're way more complex than that. They have acid that they secrete in order to burrow into the bone. And then they also have a bacteria that live inside of them. And the bacteria is what actually digests the bone and creates nutrients that the bone worm can then use. It's very complicated for such a little thing. We've all seen crabs before, but you probably have not seen crabs like the Japanese spider crab. They are huge. There are reports of Japanese spider crabs that get up to the size of like a Volkswagen Beetle, if that gives people context for the size and sheer enormity of this species. It's a little unnerving when your animals are taller than you. They really make you think, if this exists on the bottom of the ocean, what else exists on the bottom of the ocean that we haven't seen yet? So 
siphonophores don't look like they should be alive. <laughs> They just look like odd conglomerations of cellophane that somehow exist as a creature. They are a colonial organism, which is an organism that's mind-blowing to me and I think many scientists that study them. It's actually a collection of multiple little animals called zoids. And each of these little zoids has a specific function that helps that animal as a whole survive and they all work together. It's like a little spaceship with all the people on it all working together for a common goal. Siphonophores have never really been displayed in aquariums, so this is really new ground that we're breaking, and we're really excited to bring this totally unique looking animal to the public and introduce them to one of the coolest species in the deep sea. I love sea angels. They're a unique little tiny snail that does not have a shell. It's swimming around the ocean. They have tiny little fins on the side of their body that make them look like little angels. The way that sea angels swim is so beautiful. But one little thing about sea angels that you wouldn't expect is they're voracious predators. Really, it can turn into almost a sea devil. But when it's time to feed, their mouth opens on the top of their head and these devilish jaws come out to attach onto a certain species of sea butterfly that they prey on. So these cute little animals, they're called sea angels, but they're actually vicious predators. Giant deep sea isopods look exactly like pill bugs on land, but they're huge. You can have isopods that are like maybe a millimeter long, and then you have a deep sea isopod, which is like the size of a football. Giant deep sea isopods are, I think, equal part nightmare to wild imagination fantasy. Food isn't readily available on the seafloor, and so deep sea isopods have adapted to eat as much as they can, and then they may not eat for a year or more until they find another large meal. I have this theory that everybody either loves them or hates them. I find that their like little faces just like look like they're kind of like plotting something. Like, I don't know, they just look like they're up to something. The Bloody Belly Comb Jelly is one of the coolest animals in the deep sea. They have this deep, dark, gorgeous red. Sunlight entering the ocean is going to slowly be lost as you go deeper and deeper into the water. The first color that you lose is red, and so a lot of animals in the deep sea tend to be red. When we shine a light on them, we think it looks very obvious, but in the dark, red makes you pretty much invisible in the deep sea. There's not much to hide behind in the deep sea, so you kind of have to have the ability to camouflage yourself if you're a deep sea animal. The sparkly rainbow light that you see is actually just light bouncing off these little tiny plates of cilia that are fused together and stacked on top of each other almost like dominoes. So when one moves, the rest of them move too, and it helps them swim through the water. When we shine our aquarium lights on it, their cilia diffract the light into a moving rainbow all over the body. The Monterey Bay Aquarium is the only aquarium ever to display the Bloody Belly Comb Jelly and some of these other amazing deep sea animals. It's not often you really get to meet a deep sea creature face to face. Into the Deep takes this vast and unknown wilderness and brings it into the public awareness. The opportunity to be able to bring what's deep down in the ocean to everyone is really cool. We really can't wait to share all these amazing animals with you. <laughs>